Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's keep going with the red wines. Uh, so this one again from Som Select. Uh, we've got the 2017 Domaine de Goya, G-O-U-Y-E, uh, Syrah of Vin de France, uh, Gabalon for $23.60, so probably like $22, $21 uh, from Som Select. So I remember, I just read the notes again. I remember reading this, these notes and like, this is a wine I've got to get because it sounds like it's going to be a killer wine for the price. So, um, let's get into, uh, what we're going to, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to read the text of most of this. There's a few things I'm going to skip over, but, uh, let's see here. So, uh, today's wine is called Gabalon. It's designed to be an earlier drinking, more gently priced San Joseph Syrah, but it's not actually in San Joseph, okay? Uh, but in classic De, Des, Desbos uh, fashion, because uh, this is Philippe Desbos, um, the wine over delivers in dramatic fashion, sourced from old high elevation estate vines, that fall ever so marginally outside the San Joseph Appalachian boundary and age for a shorter period um, before release. Uh, the wine is all about vibrancy and pure Syrah uh, for half the price of flagship San Joseph. Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, so just where San Joseph? San Joseph is on the west bank of the Rhone River, produces wines priced at mere fractions of the heavyweights across the river uh, in Hermitage and Cote Routy, or Cote Routy nearby. Um, however, not all San Joseph is, is created equal. So in 1969, they uh, extended the Appalachian by 40 miles. So they went from 240 hectares to 2,900 overnight. So there's definitely lots of variation of quality levels. But if you get it from like the really good producers, you're always going to get good stuff. Um, I said the absolute best wine producing towns in the Appalachian lie in the southern part of San Josef, just across the river from Hermitage. One of these towns, Saint Jean de Mouzols, is where the rustic Domaine de Goya resides. Uh, third generation Philippe Desbos of, of the Domaine oozes old school French authenticity. Uh, you'll find him tilling the vineyards behind a horse. I remember this part. Uh, punching down grapes by foot and using a hand-turned vertical press built in 1886. Uh, this wine takes its name from a tiny hamlet stationed less than a mile from the domain. Uh, his parcel is a 50-year-old, his the small parcel of 50-year-old vines pushed past 1,000-foot elevation. Soils are just like the vines that completely surround his house, decomposed granite, along with the help of his plow horse and a mechanical winch in the most precipitous sections. Uh, they tirelessly till the rows and follow strict sustainable practices until harvesting by hand. This is like not even 25 bucks. Uh, afterwards, whole cluster grapes were sorted in the cellar and painstakingly foot trodden. The grapes underwent a natural fermentation in large oak casks and then rested in a combination of stainless steel vats and old neutral French barrels for seven months. Upon maturity, the wine was bottled, unfined, and unfiltered. All right. So, it's not exactly natural wine, but it's pretty darn close. Good Lord, this is good. Every wine tonight's been a good wine. I'm really happy. I haven't had a wine that was like, oh, it sucked. Even the $12 Sauvignon Blanc was... was I want to say stellar, but it was really good, especially because it was like seven years old. So, 
somewhat smoky, um, somewhat smoked meat, not quite meaty, but more like a savory thing, peppery, um, darker fruits, like a blackberry, but everything's really subtle. It's not like in your face. Uh, fruit is somewhat tart. Almost like prickly, like you kind of, almost like the alcohol's coming through. Let's see what the alcohol says on here. 13%, so it's not, so we'll see what it tastes on the palate. There's, um, there's a bit bright red fruit in there too. Not quite like a bubble gum, but... <laughs> Yeah, not really. Okay, let's taste it. So last episode I said this was spice driven. This is like, this is like, you know, this is like, you know, all the spices piled on the bus. And Otto from, from The Simpsons is driving that bus. That's what this is like with those spices. With a combination of like, like this juicy but tart, like raspberry, little black cherry and blackberry. And you've got like, you're, you're, you're gnawing on like a fresh piece of wood and, um, you got like that fresh potpourri bag kind of like hanging from the rear view mirror. That's, that's your, that's like, instead of like the, instead of like the pine, the, the pine tree, they got, you got the, you got that. And maybe a little bit of a, a, a patchouli going on there. And uh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, um, uh, clove, the oil, you know, the stoners all use and uh, patchouli. Um, but it's all like subtle too. It's not like it's like in your face, man. Man. Tannins are there. They're really starting to kind of come through a little bit. So the first line I read said it's designed to be an earlier drinking, more gently priced, blah, blah, blah. It really is. It, it's more approachable early. Now, this is, what was this, a 16? 16? 17. 13% alcohol, yeah. Um, and the alcohol is really not coming through. Like, it's not like, oh my God, it's big and bold. So, it was just like a whiff of alcohol in the nose, but it was like that one time. That one time at, at, at you know, wine camp. Yeah, I mean, this wine is just like... I could tell you that I just sip on this thing, you know, but I'd rather like have it with some food. Like I'd, I'd like to have it with some savory stuff because it's like, it's like a, it's like a, a um, like a pot pie, like a, not a, not a chicken pot pie, but I guess it could be a chicken pot, but like a pot pie, you know, there's, there's like the savory spices and, and like kind of sweet meats almost, not quite sweet, but like, you know, sweeter style meat, like a barbecue thing going on, like a little brisket. Oh man, this, this begs for Texas barbecue. Absolutely, but not like the super spicy, like, like, like hot spicy, like a little savory, almost like the sweet barbecue sauce. And like authentic like barbecue sauce. Like they, they actually make their own barbecue sauce. Not like, you know, they 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 bought like the pre-made stuff from Cisco, which is usually like Hunts and Heinz and not that they're wrong with that, but good lord, that's good wine. Man, every wine's been getting better and better. All right, man. I got some wines to look forward to to drink over the next couple weeks. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Buy the wine. You should buy this wine. This one you might be able to find. And if you don't find this particular vintage, they make it every year, I guess every year. So you see this guy, you see this, you see this, this wine, freaking buy it, man. Click the links above to friend me up. 
Click links below to learn more about the wine. Hit the uh, donate button over there uh, to send me some ducats to help me uh, offset the cost to Oregon. I'm so looking forward to Oregon. And the drone, uh, just so real, I, I know we're like five episodes in, uh, but everything being recorded on the 11th, actually, now it's past midnight, uh, 10th, 11th of September, the last couple days, I've actually taken the drone out uh, and done some practicing with it. I'm getting a little bit better. I mean, I'm not going to be, I'm not like, you know, pro level. I've only really flown the drone for like an hour maybe at this point. But um, I'm really digging the drone and the quality of the footage is really nice. I haven't bought any ND filters to get that quote cinematic look where it's all nice and smooth. But just looking at it on the computer and on the big screen TV, without doing anything else, just letting it be all automatic. For my purposes, it's totally fine. Now, if I want to do something like higher end, I guess, for wineries or anyone else, yeah, yeah, I probably have to invest in some ND filters and things like that. But you can, you can, you can really replicate a lot of that just in post anyway. So um, it's just really getting that that shutter speed, um, getting that shutter speed to to um, to the point where. Uh, you can uh, get a smoother, you're not having like a high, high shutter speed, like, you know, a thousand frames per second. Like you get that 120 or if you're trying to do cinematic, then it needs to be like 1 50th of, of a second, not 120 um, or 1 48th or whatever. And then you get that smoother, like you get that motion blur is what the people are looking for. Anyway, tasty wine, buy it, later.